making a hollow, impact resistant and flexible stunt prop using the KX Flex 90 urethane elastomer. Now in today's video, we are using a Rebound 25 Platinum brush-on silicone mold. This uh, material does not require a release agent in order to cast the KX Flex 90 into it. The support shell for this mold is Matrix Drive. Now today's project does have several goals that we set for ourselves. We want to create a flexible and impact resistant prop that will withstand the demanding use on a theater or prop movie set. We also want to show you how to create a hollow casting using the KX Flex 90, which is a very fast setting material. And we want to show you how to replicate the look of a gypsum sculpture out of a more flexible material. Now let's just jump into this project and see how it's done. For this project, we're using the KX Flex 90. It's a 90 durometer, two part polyurethane elastomer. The mix ratio for the KX Flex 90 is by weight only. So we do need to use an accurate gram scale when dispensing this product. The mix ratio is 108 to 120 B. The working time or pot life of the material is two and a half minutes, while the handling time is 20 minutes. Full cure is achieved after 24 hours. Something to keep in mind with the KX Flex 90 is that it's an off-white color and we will be adding some UVO white to make it even brighter. The KX Flex 90 has a 90A durometer. Now, the reason why we went with the KX Flex 90 and not the 60 is because I'm planning on a rotational casting this object, sculpture, and leaving it hollow. I'm not backfilling it with any material such as flexible foam. So we use the 90, KX Flex 90, because it's a little bit firmer. And I know that in a quarter inch thickness, as we'll see in our crosscut, this material will hold its shape and the weight off the material without deforming. And if you're not familiar what shore hardness scale is, check out the link that will link you to our website to this graph here. This will explain to you what the durometers for the different hardnesses mean and compare to in a real world application. Now, before we dispense any material, it's really important that we follow the instructions and premix them thoroughly. The individual components need to be premixed before being dispensed. If we dispense the material before premixing, we're going to have an off ratio batch. You're dispensing only part of the ingredients that are in the material. This can lead to the material not curing at all or curing partially, or even crumbling, and not having the properties that it should have once fully cured. Think about your material as a recipe, and that recipe has a certain ingredients, a, a number of certain ingredients, and if we dispense the material without premixing, you're only dispensing some of those ingredients and creating an off ratio in the entire batch. If you now go back, and premix the material that's left over from your batch, you're going to automatically change the number of the ingredients that are in that material, causing the rest of your castings or your recipe, if you want to put it that way, to be off ratio. Here you can see me, I'm going to be scraping this, the bottom of the container, and you can see that the color is slowly changing. There should be no streaking, or clumps in the material after you have premixed. Once the material has been premixed, we're going to dispense 240 grams of the KX Flex Part B using an accurate gram scale. Now, to that, we're going to add 15 grams of the UVO white. Make sure that you follow the instructions for adding colorant and don't add more than 3% of the total amount of your material. Now, the reason why I'm using a gram scale to dispense the colorant is so that we can control the color from batch to batch and be exactly the same. Once the UVO is thoroughly premixed into the part B, we can go ahead and dispense 200 grams of the part A. 
The part A is always going to be more sensitive to moisture and to minimize any kind of moisture contamination. We're always going to dispense the part A last. And then the components are combined together. Now, this is a fast setting material. You want to keep that in your mind. So you have to work fast, but thoroughly. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your mixing container. It's really important that you work those two components together thoroughly because we don't have time for a double mixing with this product. The material is now poured into the mold and the rotational casting process begins. And I like to peek into the mold to see where the material is and then bring it right over the edge and spill some of that out of the mold to cover all the surfaces on the inside. Any of the spilled material, I collect it in a bucket and that gets poured right back into the mold and gets worked again. We're gonna spin the mold to make sure that all the inside surfaces are covered with the first layer of material. And here you can see that I'm spinning the mold in a 360 degree fashion. That ensures me that all the walls are covered on the inside. And it's a good uh, habit to look inside the mold, um, if you can, to ensure that all the surfaces are covered. Now the material is all out a partial cure for five minutes before adding the next layer. The second layer of the KX Flex 90 is dispensed and premixed the same way we did the first layer by dispensing on a gram scale, adding the UVO white, premixing that into the part B and then adding the part A. And again, making sure that you work fast, but thoroughly when working with fast setting materials. Working quickly, I'm going to start the rotational casting process and get a coating of material inside the mold. The KX Flex is a exothermic material, so it will start to warm up, heat up. So the more mass you have in a single spot, the faster it's going to set up. And here I'm repeating the same thing, bringing the material right over the edge and continuing to spin that mold to build up an equal thickness layer throughout the entire mold so that our casting has uh, even thickness all throughout. That's why you wanna keep spinning that mold until the material has stopped moving. If the mold allows it, you can always keep an eye out on the material inside the mold or you can check the material in the retainer cup. Once the material has stopped moving, I'm going to set up the mold and give it a partial cure for five minutes. Now, the last layer, we're gonna do a third layer, but before we do that, we're going to trim some of that uh, material that spilled over the edge, over the opening of the mold, because we're trying to cap this casting. So we're gonna trim all this extra material away. And then we're going to make a cap for the mold, a board, basically a melamine board that's going to cap this uh, so we can saw, uh, cast a bottom to the mold and have it be all enclosed. For that, again, I'm using a melamine board. I'm gonna spray some universal release agent. And then we're gonna spread that release by brushing it around with a dry brush. And finally, letting it sit for five minutes before put to use. And then for the third and final layer, I'm going to repeat the same procedure in dispensing the part B, mixing the pigment into it, and of course, dispensing the part A and mixing it all together. Again, fast setting materials, so remember to work fast. Once the material is in our mold, we're going to cap the mold with that melamine board we prepared and some clamps. This is going to hold the board uh, on the mold itself and prevent it from floating away and material leaking. And now, just like we did previously, we're going to uh, continue the rotational casting process where you spin the mold in a 360 degree fashion. And here I'm going to set this mold up, again, letting it uh, rest so that the material can uh, slowly make its way down to the bottom of that mold. 
This will create a cap on our casting so that the casting itself has walls all along all the sides, including the bottom. The material is now allowed to cure for 24 hours before being demolded. Once the material has cured, we can go ahead and demold our casting. Start by removing the board, the melamine board that we put on the bottom and then the support shell. Now the rebound brush-on mold can be easily peeled away from the casting to reveal a fully detailed casting out of our mold. So there you have it. The KX Flex captured all the detail of the Rebound 25 mold that we have here and was able to reproduce a lightweight, yet very durable casting. Here you can see me smashing it against the table. No damage. And I can simply uh, trim some of the flashing away to finalize the casting. Keep in mind that this can also be sanded with different grit sandpaper if you need to do any final work. The KX Flex 90 has captured all the detail from our mold, and the casting looks absolutely identical to what a gypsum sculpture would look like. As you can see here in this comparison shot, you cannot really tell which sculpture was made out of the KX Flex 90 and which one is made out of gypsum. Now, since this casting is hollow, we went ahead and cut it, sliced it in half, and then marked the edges with a red marker so you can clearly see the thickness of the casting. The casting thickness is about five to seven millimeters thick, or about a quarter inch. This is sufficient material thickness so that the sculpture will not deform and will keep its shape even when sliced in half. Now to put the casting to the test, we're going to take it out to the parking lot and run it over with our truck. The air that's inside our casting does need to a place to go. So we do need to put our vent hole just so the air that's inside the casting can escape once we compress it. To test the material strength off the KX Flex 90, we ran our casting over with a full size truck and as you can see, the casting rebounds back to its original shape with no problem. No material failure occurred, just a little bit of schmutz and dirt from the tires. Quite amazing material for what it can withstand. And here, one more time, slowly driving over that casting, squeezing the air out of it, compressing the casting itself under the weight of the truck, and then once the weight is off the casting, it can rebound back to its original shape. Here again, you can see it breathing back and bouncing back to its original shape. Now, while these two sculptures look absolutely identical, they are both hollow castings. They also have a similar color and it's hard to differentiate them, but you can see that the gypsum sculpture weighs 6.5 pounds, whereby the KX Flex 90 sculpture weighs only 2.7 pounds, so quite a drastic difference between them two. You can see that the KX Flex 90 is going to be much lighter in the same application. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you need some materials for your own project, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create lightweight yet flexible and impact resistant props using the KX Flex 90. Now let's just take a look at our project goals. We're able to create a flexible and impact resistant prop that will withstand the demanding use on a uh, theater set or a movie set. We also showed you how to create a hollow casting using the KX Flex 90 for rotational casting. And we showed you how to replicate the look of a gypsum sculpture using some UVO pigments. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making, casting, and other videos, remember to subscribe.